Let's start with the system first. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Can you prepare to introduce Professor Oscar Garcia Prado? Uh, uh, from the CC in 2002. Oscar Garcia Prada is uh, one of the leading mathematicians from Spain. She uh, got a master's degree in science and she has a PhD are also in the direction of Nanya teaching the time of Donaldson. Uh, she uh, then had a space at the IHES, the University of California, Berkeley, and the University of uh, Paris, Sue. Uh, later on, she was associated to the Autonomous University of Madrid and the Autonomous University in Paris. On the time he joined the IMA CIC. He worked in the science and education mathematics, but uh, primarily uh, his models, high time theory, life and quality, and that means his Higgs gauge equation. He had published papers in some of the most distinguished journals in the world, views, JVG, uh, gems, etc. And uh, it's also uh, very important for us because he's a member of, of the INSIGHT Executive Committee, that is the Institute uh, Consortium, the Institute of Mathematical Sciences of America. Uh, he has been a key proponent of the international collaboration with the Americas. And we are very happy to have him here today, speaking about his bonds and the portfolio of higher rank. Okay. Thank you very much for the uh, nice introduction. And uh, um, the pleasure is all mine, and it's an honor to be in Spain to be in a conference promoting Latin American mathematics in an institute devoted to the promotion of Latin American mathematics. So um, let me start with uh, so I want to thank you all, of course, for inviting me and with me, uh, Kelvin. <laughs> and uh, so let me introduce the uh, objects I want to consider. Uh, we are starting with uh, S being an oriented, a smooth, compact surface of geometry and pattern. I will test the fundamental group of S. And we consider um, a complex, semi simple, reductive, or sometimes we be a reductive uh, the group, but mostly semi simple, and a real form. Of the group G. By a real form, I mean uh, fixed points of an anti-holomorphic involution uh, have in mind, for example, G in S L C and G R in S U N or S U P Q or S L R and so on. And it's interesting that you can think of the complex group actually itself as a real form. It's a real form of uh, so G is a real form of G cross G. If you have an evolution that permutes the, the two factors. So, uh, I will be focusing mostly on real forms that are not complex, but you can have this situation when the group uh, is complex and the equilibrium is a real part. So, we are interested in studying representations of the fundamental group in this real form, GR. And by representation, I mean simply a homomorphism. And we want to have a nice space for our classes. So, we need uh, consider reductive representations. These are representations uh, on more persons from the fundamental group of S to GR. So that if you um, combine uh, with the adjoint representation, it's completely reducible representation of the fundamental group into the algebra. So these are reductive representations. And if this is a set of all reductive representations, we consider the modular space. Of representations, um, the multiple space of representations of parallel space, sometimes we call it GR character already, as the quotient of this set, uh, this space of reductive homomorphisms, modular conjugation. So this is a, a, a analytic variety when uh, the GR is on the and other variety. So this is the character, first, one of the first characters in this, uh, in this story. Now, uh, 
assume uh, sometimes the real form would be uh, disconnected, but suppose that the real form is connected and the are semi simple. There is a natural topological environment that you associate to representation, and this is a um, is an element in the fundamental group of the group GI. This is um, this you can you can define in many ways, but you can think of it as actually the class the, uh, the topological environment of the flat real bundle associated to the representation. So to the representation of the fundamental group in the group GR is a GR flat bundle. And so this there is a, 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 a characteristic class, and this is an element in the fundamental group of GI. That's the environment that we associate to the uh, and if we fix this invariant, we can consider the sub variety of the chemical variety consisting of all representations, which gives this invariant. And uh, it's uh, well known that if this uh, real form is compact, so it's not an SEM, or it's actually complex, like SLNC itself, the, um, the um, components. Um, of the topological components, the components of the category are parameterized by the fundamental group of GI. So, for example, here is SUN, SUN is simply connected, this has only one kind of component, right? But the situation is very different for non complex, non compact real groups. Right? So, SUPQ or SLNR and so on. And in general, this map that associates uh, to a component the topological environment is neither injective nor uh, subjective. And uh, the most elementary example, we can see this phenomenon is the most uh, elementary example, the simplest case of a real form that is non abelian. And this is the case of SO2R. Right? The SO2R. So the real form of SO2C, so the real form of C2 and so on. And so in this uh, case, the topological environment is uh, because the fundamental group of SO2R is uh, Z, because SO2R has a maximum compact circle, SO2, and so the environment is an integer. This integer is uh, known as uh, close to the Euler number. And so if you fix this order number and you consider in the SO2 character variety the representations with fixed order number D, so here's the third result that goes back to the number uh, in 1958, in which it shows that this character variety is empty unless the order class is bounded in absolute value by the genus of the surface minus one. So this is studying as the map that I uh, showed previously. This is not subjective. So not every all the number you have, only the numbers that are bounded by minus minus one. Yeah, the important solve. And it took like about 30 years to actually show that uh, if uh, you take the order number being smaller than d minus one, so if you're smaller, then this is connected. But then if you take the maximum value, the uh, the order number being exactly d minus one or the opposite, then this has two to the two g connected components. So injectivity is also fixed also. So this is a very um, uh, first example. You uh, see that, and uh, so, but more relevant to this talk today is the fact that this uh, maximum component. Any of these maximum components, there are two to the two G, as I said, is actually consists entirely of Fuchsian representations. These are discrete and faithful uh, representations. And via the uniformization theory, this can be identified with Tachmuller space. Right? And this was shown by uh, the uh, in his thesis. So this, uh, so the maximum of the class, there are two to the two G, and each of them. Can be actually viewed as tightly the space parameterizing complex structures. And I think this is by the information here because uh, we can consider the hyperbolic metric of uh, uh, negative scalar constant and negative scalar curvature, and the holonom of that gives us the representation of the rest of the line. Okay. 
So here is a question that was, um, I don't know if this is what asked years ago at the time, but this is what we can now formulate whether there are higher rank certain groups with similar features to those of SO2. And what do I mean? I mean two things. First, that the um, components, the topological connected components, are uh, not distinguished by the primary topological environment. The primary topological environment being the element of the phenomena class. This happened here. We have two the 2G, and uh, they all correspond to the same uh, primary environment. This is already class G minus one of those. But more relevant, perhaps, is we want high uh simple groups through which the character variety has components consisting entirely of discrete and faithful representations. Yeah? So this is the task. And so such components are referred as higher rank tangular components or just higher tangular components. And so um, two cases were first identified. And the first case was that of split real groups. And um, by uh, split real groups, I mean when S of an R is a split real group of uh, real formula so you see every simple complex group has a split real form. Your formal groups have S O T B or S O T B plus one, depending on the parity, right? And also the section groups. So you have this the split real groups and pitching um prove the existence of uh, constructed sum components um, that are now called teaching components. The next case, this was at the early 90s, and about 10 years later, another uh, class was that of permission groups. These are real forms whose symmetric space, that is the quotient of the group by a maximum contact, is permission, when it's actually K. Yeah? And, and so in here, these are the maximum to the environment components. I will, I will present the nature. So these were two classes of groups that were identified. And then um, for a long time, it was sometimes it was believed that these were the only two classes of groups, but um, there were other groups emerging in the universe, right? And so the uh, goal of this talk, uh, the two goals, the first, is to present uh, from the Hitchman perspective, from a geometry, a true classification of uh, these groups, the groups for which higher line technical components can exist, and also describe the parameterization of these components in terms of Hitchman. This is uh, known as theory correspondence. And second, I want to. Um, to exhibit uh, how one can exploit this correspondence to compute uh, the study of topology of this component of component. In particular, I want to illustrate an example in which we can compute the intersection phenomenon of some uh, of these components that are similar. So let me then get to heat bundles uh, and in this uh, we consider a complex surface. So this is our surface is um, equipped with a complex structure, a, a complex surface. And here is what you need to define these bundles. So we still have the same setup as before. We have a complex in the simple or the reductive group. Um, we have a real form, and then we consider maximal compact subgroup of GI. Um, for example, we took S of an R, so we have four maximum impacts S of one. So we fix that in the story. And once we fix that, there is a decomposition of the Lie algebra of this real form into the Lie algebra of the maximum compact that we have fixed and some orthogonal part that uh, we um, have by considering uh, uh, the Killing form, the Killing form that is. Uh, uh, on the, the algebra. So the, the group, it, it will restrict the atom representation of GR into its Lie algebra, and we restrict it to the maximum compact of your face. There, this gives two representations of that maximum compact. One is the atom, 
And the other one in MR is the so-called isotropic representation. So we want to consider the complexification of that representation. So I call H. H is the uh, complexification of this maximum compact. And I call M the complexification of MR. Yeah? So this actually, this, I mean, the origin of the name is here, this MR is the tangent space at the identical set of the symmetric space GR and HR. Okay, and so this is the complexification of the S Okay, so that's a lot to have solved, but with our ingredients, with this ingredients, we can define now what we call a uh, a GR Higgs model on the region surface. And this is a pair, if the that has uh, where E is holomorphic principal H bundle over X. Remember, H was a complexification of the maximum compact. And P is the holomorphic section of the, you see, now because using the isotopic representation, we can consider the M bundle associated with this principal H bundle. So this is a, a bundle of uh, vector spaces with the five Z. Tensor with the cotangent bundle of the surface non-common bundle. And so P is the section of that. Right? So this is a, uh, uh, if we if we have actually, if we have taken GI to be a complex group, this is a more familiar notion of the Higgs bundles. Um, so G, uh, you know, it's a real form of G cross G, let's say G is complex, then this is, you know, recover the original uh, definition. We have a G bundle. And a section of the adjoint bundle tends to come up, a particular case of this construction. But the emphasis today is actually on real forms that are not complex. And so there are uh, suitable notions of stability and volatility that come from geometric environment theory uh, that allows us to construct these modular spaces. Um, there are, so, so don't be mistaken, the, the fact that GI is real. Uh, the whole construction here is absolutely holomorphic algebraic. And so this modular space is really a complex algebraic parameter. Uh, and, uh, and, and so, um, um, and it's constructed using various methods, and uh, the most of construction given by Schmidt and, uh, and using geometric combined theory. And uh, so it's important to actually notice that K that appears here can actually be replaced by any other value bundle. So all the definitions and the stability, the stability, and so on go through for any line bundle. And this would be important because even though we are starting with the usual Higgs bundles, in our K construction that I have mentioned, uh, line bundles different than K, in fact, hours of K will appear. And this would be very important. Now, so why do we care about these models in connection to that? Right? This is given by the non abelian particle space that says that if S is our smooth uh, oriented complex surface in the beginning, and J is a complex structure uh, on S, and it was the real surface uh, defined by the smooth structure, then there is a homeomorphism between the character variety. Of GI and the modular space of uh, GI region models. And uh, so this, this uh, correspondence, um, this correspondence um, can be improved, at least I want to emphasize this today because it is important. So, but is um, by solving two systems of nonlinear P's uh, that uh, the first one. Uh, this one for these bundles identifies this with solutions to the so called Hitching equations, some big scale equations. And this was that theorem of uh, uh, solving these Hitching equations was proved by Hitching in his first seminal paper in 1987. And then by Simpson for any arbitrary GI complex, uh, actually in higher dimensions as well, and um, by my collaborators. In, in, the, in this context of GR real system. The other theory is actually a um, is um, 
solving things for linear hardness mutation, then you can think of a flat linear bundle and you can solve for a sort of harmonic metric in this flat linear bundle uses a refraction of the swamp to move to the maximal compact. And so, uh, and this is um, uh, for SO2C, it was proved by Dawson and their companion paper through the one of teachings, and then by Kablex in general. So, combining these theorems, you have this homomorphism. And in the same way as we could define the topological invariant, for the uh, representation in the tactic variety, you can find a topological invariant for a GRT model. And this topological invariant is actually the, the, the characteristic class that parameterizes uh, flat, uh, excuse me, but as H models. And this is an element in the fundamental group of H. And again, I'm assuming that GR is connected. And the fundamental group of H is the same. As because H retracts to its maximal compact is the same as the fundamental group of HR, which is the same as, as the fundamental group of GR. Huh? And so this topological invariant, you can fix it as before, and then we can consider the sub variety of GR X models with fixed, um, uh, fixed uh, topological class C. And uh, of course, the non abelian correspondence that I mentioned this uh, restricts. To give you a homeomorphism between the character variety, the sub variety where you fix this invariant, and the sub variety of Higgs models, in which case of here, Higgs models, that you are fixing this invariant too. Right. Okay, so this, this correspondence here has been, uh, you know, because this is, a, this is a complex variety, even though here, if GR is real. And not complex, this is a real and we can the browser. But this is complex, and this has been exploited using algebraic geometry methods or a complex analysis of more theory and so on to study the topology of this kind of variety. It's been worth decades in doing that, in particular, counting the connected components that this variety has. There was a talk last month here by Steve Bradbury explaining that, in particular, the quantum components, the real groups. But that's not the uh, focus today. So I want to go um, um, to yes, we are going to exploit this uh, correspondence, but we are going to also, uh, for some groups that we want to identify, to exploit uh, an even more powerful correspondence. And this is the, um, what we call the Katie correspondence. And to explain uh, what that is um, and, and how we can classify all the groups for which higher than secular uh, components exist and find this parameterization, I need to do some um, uh, some new theory. This is so. This is what we do uh, in a paper with uh, Steve Bradlow, Brian Caldwell, and Dr. Rivera that you can find in the archive. And uh, and uh, the key ingredient to do that to give this classification is given by certain important elements in the Lie algebra uh, G, the complex Lie algebra, or corresponding SO2 triplets. So this requires a little bit of new theory to explain as elementary as I can. And so if G is a simply uh, is a simple complex Lie algebra. And G is a uh, uh, connected complex group with the algebra G, so consider that. So recall that, uh, see that an element in G is important, so important is the corresponding adjunct uh, element representation element in the uh, uh, of the algebra is important. It's an important matrix, right? And so, um, so the uh, important elements in the Lie algebra form a cone, and G, the group, acts on this cone by a conjugation with finally many elements, the very classic, right? And uh, and so there is a unique open dense orbit with finite number of elements of the important elements. There is a unique one opening 
This is an important element that both principles be important. Uh, and uh, so, a uh, an important theorem of the Coxon uh, model solve says that if you give me an important element, I can complete it to an SO2 triple. These are three elements, F, H, and E, so that they satisfy the, the E bracket relations of SO2 of SO2C. Uh, this is called an SO2 triple. And so there is a bijection now between the uh, classes of the, of the important elements, yeah, and classes of SO2 subadjectives in G modular conjugation. So it's a finite number on each of these sets. And this is just you give me this element with an important element, I complete it to an SO2 triple, and I consider the SO2 algebra expanded by it, and so this is a very important concept. So uh, now, if you give me a non zero important element, non trivial important, and then I complete it, and I have the SO2 uh, uh, sub algebra in G, there are two different compositions of the Lie algebra that I can consider. So, one is as a representation of SO2C. So, SO2C is a sub algebra in G, so G decomposes. In terms of SO2C representations, this is basic representation theory of SO2C uh, into the Lyapunov regime. So we compose this as an SO2C module, right? and some of these spaces that I call uh, this representation spaces I call WJ, J, and WJ is the direct sum of NJ copies of the unique J plus one that uh, dimensional irreducible that we do this. That's one decomposition. I can have SO2C. Image. The second decomposition is that I can now consider this element H that uh, was uh, taken by the Coxon mode soft in the triple. And this element H is a semi simple element. And I can decompose now the Leandra in the eigen spaces by the action of this element H by the water action. That is the, the action of H on X, now uh, just the bracket, this is the new bracket of X with H, is J times X. So this J, the eigen value, right? And so this is the that decomposition and it's important uh, also to notice that the element E brings me J, J, J plus two, and this other element F, uh, the sense goes from GJ to GJ minus. So I have these two propositions. And now I can sort of combine them, right, in the sense that I can express everything now um, in terms of this, um, um, uh, this highest weight subspaces. DJ, so this consider representations of SO2. You have this uh, highest weight representation, and everything can be expressed in terms of this DJs and acting by solution D many times by and so on. So, in the end, I have this decomposition here. I can probably figure out the two things that I just haven't. And then with this ingredients, I can define. A vector space involution on the Lie algebra G associated to this important element by saying on B0 I have the identity and on, on this other factor there minus one to K plus one identity and you can extend it to the whole Lie algebra G. That gives a, a vector space involution. And so sometimes it happens that this. Vector space involution is actually a deep algebraic involution. So it's really a, 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 a locomotion of the Lie algebra. And when that happens, we call this important element for the uh, corresponding SM2 triple module. I don't like this kind of terms, but uh, we are sticking it now. I mean, uh, that, I mean, it sounds one of the implications of this. Okay, so this is uh, magical. 
So we say that it's magical if this defines a leap algebra involution. And in particular, this gives us a real form of the of the Lie algebra G because this involution decomposes G in H plus N. Um, and then from there, this gives us a real form on uh, on the on the uh, GR on the Lie algebra G. So in particular, magical and important elements if we find in a canonical way a real form on the Lie algebra G. All right. So here's so what we uh, did in our paper was classifying these uh, magical important orbits, of which, importantly, the principal important orbit is one. So it's the, the principal important orbit is magic. And then by looking at the, uh, this, the classified um, for the classical reactograms using the, 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 class, the classification of the importance in terms of plant diagrams, and then work of Dropovich on the classification of the important objects with the exception of the groups. So we uh, identify what are the magical um, important elements or magical important approaches. And in particular, here are the real forms that emerge as canonical real forms of these magical important elements. And you get one part of it that is the split real forms. That I mentioned before, the Hermitian real forms of cube time. I will explain what this cube time thing is. Right? And then a third family came from SOPQs with P bigger than one. And also these exceptional uh, E groups, uh, uh, exceptional real forms of E6, E7, and E8, and F4. And these are real forms that um, so we call quaternion real forms because the symmetric space that uh, G R mod the maximum of type at least a quaternion Taylor form. And uh, yes, uh, those of you that have been yeah, with this, uh, the Hermitian real forms are identified by the fact that in the maximum compact there is a circle. Okay. Um, um, uh, the new one. These other ones are characterized uh, by the fact that in the maximal configuration, SU2. And it's very interesting to notice that in every, uh, while, you know, the Hermitian real forms do not occur for any complex uh, Lie algebra or any complex Lie group, the quaternion ones do occur for any, uh, in any complex, uh, it's always for any complex uh, simple Lie algebra. There is always a real form which is quite So these particular quaternion forms do appear in the list. And I wanted to mention that in fact, several real forms in the list, in this list, appear from different magical triples. So for example, this symplectic group, which is both split and permission of two type, appears both in these two lists. But except that the important Orbit. When you talk about that the parent is speaking that in this place, in this case is the Boyer, uh, still is, 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 is the, the, the still the principle, the important, while the one that is in here is not the principle important, is some other important. Okay, and the same happens for other groups. But this is the list of groups of real forms that appear from magical important. Okay, so now, um, so in a sense, we have been, you know, anticipated that these real forms are actually the only ones for which one is going to have this higher right tabular spaces. And, um, but I also promise that we will give a parameterization of this uh, higher right tabular uh, spaces. And here is what I mean by that. So, from the magical triple or the magical important element, you can expect what we call the hidden data. This is a bunch of integers, right? These integers come from the decomposition of the Agonesto 2C matrix, right? That's for the special case of a magical triple. 
And then there is a readout form that we can detect of this G0. Remember, there was one decomposition of uh, G in eigenspaces under the action of H. This was the one that um, uh, the one that's central this is H. So this is the eigenspace of zero. And there is a real form of that. So this package you get somehow from this uh, magical thing. And now uh, what happens is that if this element is a magical important element, uh, with a uh, corresponding canonical real form of GR, and GR is a big group that has used the algebra, then in this multiple space of GR orthogonals, in this situation, in this multiple space of GR orthogonals, there is a union of connected components that I denote by HEGR, such that Higgs bundles in those uh, in that sub variety have no wear vanishing fee. So this means actually that they don't factor to uh, uh, um, the maximal compact, right? But, and then also, here is a parameterization that this union of connected components is in fact a multi space of GR prime Higgs bundles, but as I um, was indicating before, where the twisting is not by the canonical length bundle, but somehow uh, of the canonical length bundle, where this MC is bigger than one, and then a bunch of holomorphic differentials. This is basically uh, so. <clears throat> so this is how this conforms uh, look like. Now, this uh, correspondence is actually uh, I won't give the definition, right? But is using this KB data that I mentioned and using. The case of SO2R. So, this everything is generated by this, by the true tabular space in SO2R and the Higgs bundle corresponding, Higgs bundle corresponding to that. Using that and, and the other bunch of some other bunch of fields here, we construct this little and uh, show that it is an asymptotism on top of its living with the open and close, and then these are the new components. So this is um, how we uh, how we do it, and um, there are many issues improving this. That uh, you know, these multiple spaces um, are defined some notion of a stability. This with a different notion. One of the difficulties is to prove that they prove something that's stable to is truly stable to. Okay, so this. Correspondence, this scaling correspondence generalizes previous constructions, but uh, and it gives a unified approach to uh, them. And the first construction here is actually what is called the hitching section for the split groups. In the split, uh, in the case of uh, split real forms, this is actually how hitching constructed uh, these components. And then another construction is. That we generalize it is a case correspondence that was defined for the missing groups of tube type, and then a more recent correspondence for a circuit. Let me now um, and tell you um, a bit of each of these three cases. Um, yeah, let me see how I'm doing in this. Yeah. Christmas. So how far is this configuration in your notebook? Sorry? How far is this configuration in your notebook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, 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 um, it's, it's uh, very far from the it's never set it. And you will see that it misses a lot. Well, it misses a lot, but we are interested in recovering some components with the special problems. And these are the other ones. Okay? So here is actually, um, so let me explain. For example, the first construction, and it was a surprise for us to see that the hitching construction was a particular example of this. And um, so, if you have the modulus space, G is complex, you have the modulus space of these bundles. Uh, hitching defined what is called the hitching map, and this is by uh, evaluating um, um, uh, invariant polynomials, invariant polynomials uh, on the field. And this is something that runs into 
the sum of holomorphic uh, uh, differentials, right? Yeah, on this vector space. So, uh, where these are the exponents of the algebra G, and so he changed uh, in 92, uh, constructed a section of this, um, a section of this map that is a map from here to here that actually landed in the multiple space of the real form of the split real form, for example, S of N R or S of C. And, uh, and, uh, and so then uh, this um, is our KD map, the specialized for a principal S of two triple. So this is the principal, as I mentioned before, the S of two in total is actually magical. And in fact, what we have done is, in a sense, was just imitating somehow what how teaching from this uh, principal important orbit recovered the spirit real form to notice that there are, in fact, these other important forms you also recover some real form but different than spirit one. Okay. And and so um so no the, the Hermitian the, the Hermitian type yeah, so so uh to actually already um answer your question uh Ernesto there is always you know, uh, when you talk about the kind of variety of modules with these bundles, there is always a component for which the x field is uh, containing x bundles whose x field is zero. And these are representations in your uh, maximal compact. Right? So they, these are always in the modular space of GR x bundles. Right? And this components that we detect never contain that. So they are always missing those in particular and others, right? But um, but we are um, precisely parameterizing very interesting ones. And so here's the case of um, of with GR is of Hermitian type, which means that this uh, symmetric space is scalar. Okay? And in this situation, so what are we talking about? The classical uh, uh, groups are SUPQ, the real symmetric group, the non compact dual of SO and SO2, and then this connected component of, um, of SO2N. And then two exceptional real forms, one of the six and another one of the seven, is that, you know, well, I mean, or finite covers, so the groups that are locally asymmetric to this, right? These are the permission type. and for these groups, if GR is simple, uh, then the fundamental group of uh, the total free part is always isomorphic to the integers. So there is always uh, the list of the basic environment in this case is always an integer. Of course, a particular case is SO2R, which is in here and it's also isomorphic to SU1 map. So this is the, in that case, this, what we call the Palladian variant, is actually. The order class, right? So this is a generalization of the order class. And um, one has similar to the minimal proof, that is called the minimal proof in the quality, that shows that this collateral value, the natural value, is bounded by the rank of the symmetric space and the genus minus one. And so this can be, uh, so this was proved you know, here, different proofs of this uh, minimal quality. Let me jump to. Um, uh, to the, to the statement that I want to make. And I mentioned this condition of being Q type. These are permission symmetric spaces, special, I mean, have a special property. Um, if you consider the case of SO2R bar SO2, this is the upper half plane, right? And we know the upper half plane is isomorphic to the bottom of this. So, all these permission symmetric spaces are uh, holomorphic to bounded symmetric domains, those are true for Kartan and Alchanda, and so on. And some of them have a sort of analog of the other half plane. Yeah? Uh, so, that in the case of the Torah, the, the, the Parker just is isomorphic to the upper half plane. So, the bounds for which there is something like the other half plane, I mean, Precisely, they are achieved over a column, okay, 
then for those are called of the right? And uh, this is, and actually, this map that relates the upper half plane to the function of this, and we study in the one variable complex analysis, we call the Haley map. And this is why there is a generalization of this Haley map in this question. This is what I'm going to tell you. This is what I'm going to tell you in the next next slide. Okay. So if I am prepared to give you that statement, yeah, which is exactly that uh if you consider I was just defining what is a you know this field type condition and one characterization of this field type is given by what is called the, the Shibok boundary of the symmetric domain, which is just some part of the of the boundary, right? And the field of boundary is always homogeneous space for HR, some HR mod some uh, subgroup. But when you use a symmetric space, a compact symmetric space, then there is a field type thing. And this field is a field over a cone, and the cone is the non compact view of this, uh, is the non compact view of this symmetric space. Okay? So this is to identify this group G prime. Right? And so, for example, to realize that what are these uh, few type uh, things, so of the S to Q, P and Q to be equal, this is always a few type. This is of few type of any seven, and then uh, it's a few type, and the E7 we are going to two type. If you think we are leaving out some of the non tube guys, you don't worry because every non tube has inside the maximum Q. So the theory is also uh, obtained for those by understanding this. But here is the theorem that you want. So there is, uh, in this case, uh, as I said, there is the Toledo value, right? That is bounded by the mean of the quality. And when this Toledo environment is maximal, and so we call this a max GR, this is exactly the statement that this and max GR, huh? When uh, this with the Toledo is maximal, then this is bipolar to a moduli space of k squared to the six bounds to this other group, the group, the one that appears in the cone, right? And uh, and so this is a particular instance of the k uh, correspondence. In fact, is in this context that we name this k correspondence, right? That we then uh, extend it to the other cases. This is a particular case of the general one that we turned to, but this was obtained previously in my work with uh, so the classical groups, actually. The classical groups in, in different groups, you know, work with a uh, very strict rather than the and then bit, and then in general in this particular uh, group. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, the SOPQ case. The appear later, uh, and that took um, some time to to find that uh, we also have found a, 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 a this you know an instance of this uh, particular case of this general daily correspondence. And in this situation, uh, what happens is that the uh, this daily components that we call daily components. Uh, the special components in the character variety for the SOPQ are isomorphic to uh, the multiple space of these bundles for this other group, right? Twisted by our P power of K and then a bunch of homomorphic differentials. So notice that actually in the kitchen construction, we just have some homomorphic differentials. In the previous construction, the this Hermitian case of Q type, we have this. There were no homomorphic differentials. There was this, this twisted Higgs bundles for a power of the canonical bundle. And in the case of SCPQ and in general, there is a mix of both things. Right? Now, we can say, why do you care about this? So, notice first of all that, um, <laughs> so here's one thing that you can notice from here, is in particular, is that. This um, basic value is fixed, 
whatever it is, is like the order plus my order plus. But then from this correspondence, you can extract new invariants that are attached to this view. For example, if this is SP211, right, then this group here is GLNR. And GLNR has stable wind classes. So it really takes actually many components, right? And uh, and another important uh, point that I want to make and is more visible perhaps here is that we have started with a group that is SOPQ, uh, has say suppose P is less than Q, but has run P or something. And then all of a sudden we end up end up here with a group that is much smaller than this is around one. So from the point of view of studying the topology of this character of this special components is a much simpler problem. And it's much simpler not only because there is a drop in the line, but also because there is this high power of the canonical bundle. And in fact, from the point of view of the topology, these factors will not contribute at all. Right? So now I have little time to actually say why there's a uh, higher bandwidth in the element given to this construction. But the fact is that this has to be combined with uh, theory, uh, with uh, work of uh, Ramli and Richard uh, Ramli and Bailey um, Potsetti, which um, <clears throat> identifies some of the real. Um, a positive structure on real groups. Right? And uh, this is a generalization of lucid positivity for its real forms. And it turns out that the classification of positive structures coincides with the classification of multiple, of multiple uh, filters. But I think this is not working. No. Hello? Yeah. I think the, the microphone is not, it's not working. Maybe there is a. Oh. Yeah. Maybe you have another, you have another option. Um, where's my line? Okay. The uh, switch is almost out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah. It seems working. Yeah. There's some difficulty with the definition. Let me take your time. Yeah. See if it's in back. I'm not sure this is working really. We can't work with that. We'll mess with it for the next one. So, sorry? We'll mess with it for the next one. So. Okay, so I will speak a bit louder and uh, we really. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, good. And uh, so this work by uh, Ladoui, and uh, it's a whole work, a uh, beautiful work about uh, positivity, notable positivity, and positive representations. And then um, combining this work with our results, we can show that actually the uh, connected components of the character variety corresponding to the Kelly components. Kelly components our components in the modular space of G are these ones. So the corresponding components here in the character variety that arise from magical triples are higher than the So they consist, in fact, of these three unstable representations. Um, this is something that has been learned for in the sweet case of Hitching. So Hitching constructed a parameterization, but it was not known. And I'm just holding a generalized sentence. But it was later on that Larry introduced the notion of uh, an absolute, uh, an absolute representations. And Prof. Uh, Elmer Charov proved that these are, in the split case of teaching, these are really higher than the particular space. So we have the uh, um, uh, sweeping paper representations. And then uh, in the permission case, combining the previous work of the cluster groups. Uh, of my work with my collaborators and um, there's work with Pika Rubio and Rubio Diosa that we've been by the way, uh, Anna Vinhart gave uh, a talk in a meeting last month here in IMSA 
where he was explaining all these beautiful things about the stupidity and the presentation with his report. But that's why this is that working now? It's not switched on, so now it's Okay, so it's really hard to count. So, let me just in the last few minutes, I have really not much time left, uh, um, say how we can exploit this daily correspondence to compute the, to compute, to get some information about the default. That's it. This is already about exploiting the number of different correspondents. We do that. But here, to this special components, right? Uh, because uh, the run is smaller, and because actually there is a higher testing that the, you can obtain, you can expect uh, very useful topological information that is, as you will see, is reachable proofs because of the word upon. Okay? And, and so this is. This instance, um, the groups SO and then plus one, where the KD, uh, we call this other group the KD partner. The KD partner is SO12. And then there is this other, for groups SO, the connected components of SO and then plus two, where the KD partner is the connected component of. SO13, which is isomorphic to pgl 2 c And then this group UNN, I will say we consider reductive groups in the case of example, we take UNN, and then the KD partner is GLSC, and for this uh, similar we call PUNN, PGLSC, and to a particular uh, of the um, one of the quaternionic real forms of the atom form of the six. The KD partner is PGLPC. So we're going, we're going to exploit this KD partner uh, to compute the uh, this intersection commodity. And so for SOM uh, plus one, uh, so these uh, KD components are isomorphic to the uh, moduli space of KD interested SO12. Um, it's not in space and this holomorphic branch. So we can forget about this because the topology is relevant. In fact, the teaching components that are so very interesting and so on from the point of view of the topology are irrelevant because they are the ball, right? So they are the ball and do that. And so here we just need to care about this uh, part here. And so uh, we need to study this uh, modular space of KN interested as well one of these bundles. And the one where with classical groups, this can be thought in terms of vector numbers. And so such an object is actually given by an orthogonal rank two vector bundle, right? And the Higgs field, there is something from the end here. And uh, I want to detect a particular component of that moduli that space that is singular. And this one is obtained by fixing first the, uh, the first civil Willy class of V to be zero. So then V is a direct sum of L plus L minus one, so L minus one inverse. And then the Higgs field can be explicitly expressed in terms of two pieces. Yeah, these are all this is between line bundles, right? So much simpler story, right? But now the thing is, we want to uh, so we want to go to identify that component, and that component uh, is obtained as follows. You consider a line bundle that moves in the Picard zero, so line bundles of degree zero, and then this new and new that are sections of this uh, line bundles here. And now assume that n, the n in the story here, is bigger or equal than two. Then this is the total space of a vector bundle of rank two n over Picard zero. There is no jumping or things or fibers. And then the singular component that we want to study is the GAT quotient of that space that varied by the action of O2C. And this components have been learned uh, originally in the work of Peter Gottlieb that he did in the case of N equals two, and then more recently by Collier in arbitrary N. 
very interesting components, and in particular, this one is singular. And uh, to compute the intersection cohomology, we use a method called Hilbert that uh, gives actually uh, computes the intersection cohomology of um, GAP coaching in terms of the Kruganian cohomology. I don't have to explain it, but you, oh, you, from that, you go straight, you start the logical binomial of, of the right? So here is some, uh, something important. In the case of n equals one, that component was already identified by Hitchin in the case of representations of the method to that was tend to order class zero. And that component is singular, and we are interested in three decades in understanding or more and understanding that. But this is not covered by this because precisely if n is one, this uh there is a jump here, and this is no longer a vector bundle. Right? There is jump in the finals because simply of you know women the, the, the conditions. And, and so that we cannot compute, we cannot compute these things. Okay. And so um so that's how we deal with that case. Let me now in the last uh transparency I was preparing something for each group, but let me say something for the other four groups. And for the output groups, what they have in common is that the data part is actually uh, essentially, forgetting about the homomorphic differentials, is related to a multiple space of GLNC examples or PGLNC, but twisted by a higher power of the commodity. And so uh, in this case, these are multiple spaces that we have been studying, you know, very important and related back to the but uh, this, when you have singularities, when the degree of the bundle and the rank is uh, is not correct, and this is exactly the situation that appears in the KD part uh, in the KD components. This is where we are not correct, and so we are singular, right? But so here, then we have. Two ingredients to deal with this, and one, to, as I said, it was a reachable truth thanks to the work of others, and the best work is the work of Malik and Shen, that show that if the degree of L is bigger than 2D minus 2, presented bigger than the degree of the canon, then the intersection cohomology of any of these components is independent of the degree. So you can just very well take degree and rank for prime. And then uh, the intersection homology is just the usual homology. That's one thing. So it reduces to the usual homology, right? Of the non singular, non singular, because the, all the all the ones are stable, they're not saying from the stables and so non singular ones. And the next piece of thing is that we know quite a lot about the we know quite a lot about the homology of this non singular space. And so uh, uh, we know um, it. Some years ago, with uh, different Heimberg and Alexander Schmidt, we actually found recursive formula to obtain um, the uh, the homology, in fact, the mode and so on. When L is equal to K, then later on uh, we have recursive formula with uh, very nice beautiful world of Schiedman and the Schiedman giving a uh, close formula, and then not the way and Schiedman um, and uh, including that, and for L, not K, but higher twisting, the muscle boy and Bowman gave uh, a, a, a computation of, of the homology and uh, the work of Anthony, and uh, uh, so this is accounting his ones for the finitives, gave actually uh, a formula for the favorite. Um, uh, and so we can from there we can now just uh, when it is GLN, then we use their formula. When it's PGLN, the KD partner, then we have this nice relation between uh, intersection homology of the GLN of the space twisted by L and the PGLN. And so um, that's how we extract the intersection homology of those components. So I have no time really to get into the others. 
So, so this is just few of these daily components, few of these higher run daily components. In the next, uh, we do a lot of work to to do to compute the topology of these other ones. And why these other ones? Because we read them, you know, particularly interesting from the point of view of high topology. Any questions? Any questions? So you need to know about the homology in John Lossine. Homology? John Lossine. So this place where the, where you take the associated representation of the bundle, and you take the homology of this bundle with the visions in this, and this John is bigger than C1 on the I mean, I'm not sure what some of the ones you have in mind. Now, we do have like a plasma one, and you see, you saw this one. These are translated for a, something like this. In, like, now, I think when we have to check something, you can see the other ones. So, this higher peculiar components, they also have the group. The image of the fundamental group is free and the <laughs> well, you know, the thing is that this uh oh you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean, this higher technical component is the very definition of a higher technical component is that yeah it's free and take and do they also carry variation of which structure for one book yes I mean uh variations okay if you take the usual model space of the one, you can take this one. Variations of uh, variation model space here are related to fixed points under the action of CSR. Okay. CSR and by multiplying it to and the variation model space here correspond to fixed points of those, or we call it other ones. Now, you do have an action of CSR on this thing, where the three things I gave is irrelevant, and you can describe. The fixed points very nicely and so on. But there is no interpretation in terms of fundamental group, uh, in terms of representation of the fundamental group into that big line, if you know what I mean. So there is a C style fixed points, you can study them, but I wouldn't call you in a very complex context because they are not corresponding to the whole system. There is no interpretation of them so as the part of the group in the group. Yeah. 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 Is there a social theory for Formadator group at the board C mantle? Uh, <laughs> uh, I know, I know it's it belong, but you see the whole thing that of course all the character variety is solid, you can break the two manifolds in particular, for example, complex theory that relates to harmonic on this map, and any uh demand and uh company demand demand for the other nation. But the fixed bundle is solely disappears, you don't have the fixed bundle solely because this relies on the fact that we're working only in the surface, only the clear manifolds, right? So the whole power of all I have been describing here is the fact that we can interpret this kind of variety in terms of multiple bundles to the harmonic objects on the inner surface. And we don't have that for uh the demand of the complex hyperbolic range. Ah, complex hyperbolic which I mean I mean sure, I mean this the theory of uh uh was extended. From the very beginning of our time was Simpson to higher uh, dimension, right? And a lot of the and there is the uh, non linear complex there, right? Now, all these new theory that I'm explaining here can be transported to that case. But the fact is that the bottom of places there seem to be actually rigid. And uh, while here on the inner surface, we do have this. Uh, complex variety and so on to remove the information and there. So, but all these uh, real forms and, uh, and uh, this uh, things do uh, and, and this can be it's a new theory, right? Now, because in how do we 
when this happens, we take a number of cases in the other. Yeah, the one which is a very different, very different. 